That's all right. It's not bad, especially when you're learning all these powerful tools. You want to be ethical with them. Punishment is controversial. Uh, this is a hot topic, especially today. You know, it's just one of those things that, especially in schools, you, can you punish? Can you not? How you punish? You know, can you uh, use timeout? Can you keep the kid off the recess thing? Can you um, spank them? You know, I know when I went to school, we had, you know, my, I got spanked by my principal with a paddle. You know, <laughs> I doubt that's going to be going on today. Right? It's controversial because it borders on the, it can border on abuse, right? If you overdo it, it's abuse. So, you know, I don't know. I, this is just one of those ones that you, you want to be cautious with it. I, I generally just tell people, don't even bother. Don't bother with punishment, you know, unless it's some type of verbal punisher. And if you're in the schools, you're working with other people's kids without the express permission of that parent or that person's, uh, or that person uh, to, to tell you that it's okay to use punishment, then I wouldn't, period. Just you know, they may be okay with timeout because they might not realize that's negative punishment. But um, I would just generally avoid punishment it, when working with other other people's children. Right? Might be different for the parents in the class here because they you know they, you're deciding what's right, and this is a tool that you can use. If a non-pain inducing alternative is available, use it. Pain is your last resort. Does it work? You bet. But do verbal reprimands work? Yeah. And depending on the family, depending on the individual, depending on the culture, sometimes those verbal reprimands are even bigger than pain. All right? the, some cultures are very sensitive to things like shame. All right? So adding shame can be a huge punisher, and it's not pain. You didn't hurt the person physically. You may have hurt them a little emotionally, but that shaming sort of thing, like I'm ashamed of you, or I'm disappointed in you, or you have shamed the family, or uh, you have embarrassed us, you know, that type of thing. That, you know, that's it's still punishment, and it may be very effective. But generally speaking, um, if, if you've got another alternative other than pain, use it. Right? Response prevention can be useful, right? where you actually prevent a particular response from occurring. And, um, but it also prevents the appropriate responding from happening. So um, this is, you know, like uh, an extreme example here is prison. Right? You go to prison for doing something wrong. Um, maybe it's something like stealing a cake or something like that. Okay, you run into Costco, you run out, you steal the cake, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you may go to prison for that, not likely, but you get an example here. Uh, it also you know, it prevents you from stealing in the future, at least while you're in jail, but it also prevents you from learning how to go into a store and not steal. Okay, uh, So that's, it is problematic to do response prevention. I like response prevention for a lot of things, but this is one of the drawbacks of it. Right. Generally speaking, in the culture right now, the the most appropriate situation to use punishment in is when you have severe problems. Is the child hurting themselves? Are they hurting others? Is there a health issue? Okay. Is something is someone going to be physically harmed as a result of this behavior continuing? If so, punish and punish immediately. And that is uh, that is ethical to use punishment in that situation. Right? And that's generally acceptable. There's all sorts of issues with timeout. We could talk about this forever. Um, but long story short here, timeout is only effective if the child does not have access to reinforcers right, during that timeout period. And timeout is only effective, it should only be used um, in terms of one minute of timeout per year of age. In other words, if you hear a teacher saying, or a kid saying, hey, I got sent to sign timeout for 30 minutes today. Um, red flags all over the place because uh, they, sh you know, let's say a sixth grader, right? They're eleven or twelve, so they should be receiving no more than twelve minutes of timeout. So what are they doing with thirty minutes? Right? Uh, it, it, uh, timeout is very effective, and it's effective if used properly. And one of those proper the proper uses of it is being quick with it. Okay? And, and you know, it's just like, okay, guess what? Timeout, and you go into your timeout, and you say, yeah, four minutes. And we'll talk about more issues with how to what, with other rules you can uh, attach onto that timeout thing. But generally speaking, one minute per per rule per year of age, um, 
And you don't want to leave the kid unattended. You don't want to put them in an exclusionary timeout and leave them unattended. So you do have to kind of watch to make sure they're okay, but you don't want to reinforce them uh, during that process. So it becomes a challenge. Timeout is hard to use. It's a little easier to use at home. Um, you can have a timeout rug or something like that, where you go to that timeout, you sit on that rug for the next four minutes or five minutes, whatever it is, and I'm not going to interact with you. I'm not going to talk to you. You don't get to play with any toys. You don't get to play with a dog or whatever it is during that time. Okay. So that's rather effective, but you can still keep an eye on them. Exclusionary time out of school, there might be a room that you actually have to send the kid to. And, and nowadays, most schools, if they have a timeout room, they have a timeout monitor. Somebody's keeping an eye on the kids in there. And sometimes you, they even have a, uh, a timeout room where you actually have to be touching the door in order for it to remain closed, like you have to touch a handle or something like that. And if you let go of that handle, then the door automatically opens and the kid can leave. All right, that's so you don't forget about the kids in the room, <laughs> which that sounds kind of funny, but it's happened, and we don't want that to happen. That becomes abuse at that point. More ethics. Right? Punishment will produce negative effects. People aggress. Right? So if you punish somebody, they're likely going to get aggressive, either towards you or towards somebody else. It causes emotional reactions. People are going to flip out when they get punished. Right? They're going to get upset. Right? We don't. When that can lead to other problems. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, escape or avoidance is one of those common things that happen with punishment, namely lying. All right. If they know they're going to get punished for something, so all they have to do is lie about it and avoid the punisher. Right? And this is going to lead to all sorts of problems, right? So we want to make sure that any escape or avoidance is minimized. It's just one of those, bleh, this is frustrating. It's a hard thing because that's what happens with punishment is they learn to avoid the punisher altogether. Hopefully they're learning to avoid the punisher by doing something appropriate, but unless you specifically reinforce that, it's not going to happen. It does not teach new responses, flat out. We already talked about that one, right? Um, the other issue is that punishment is modeling, You're, the punisher is modeling punishment, right? So if somebody watches you use punishment, like let's say a kid is watching all their teachers throughout school use punishment and they see that it works, it keeps the kids under control, guess what they're going to likely try in the future? Or guess what they're going to try with their friends? Right? So you're modeling that punishment and they're going to turn around and try it themselves. Punishment in itself is self-perpetuating. In other words, if I punish you for something, your behavior stopped because it was successful, right? So my punishment was successful, so your behavior went away. Well, that's reinforcing for me. It's negatively reinforcing for me, so it develops this nasty little cycle where I'm more likely to use punishment in the future because it gets me the results I want. The problem is, like I said above, um, it produces aggressive behavior, it does not teach new responses, and so on and so forth. So the, 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 the punisher themselves are getting reinforced. And that's why when I say not done properly, I'm saying that you're not teaching new responses in the meantime. So you always got to teach that appropriate response as well as punishing the inappropriate one. Okay, that's pretty much it for punishment. So we will come back and talk about escape and avoidance next. Talk to you in a bit.